Coming up next. Certainly the earning potential between um, psychiatry and psychology is vastly different. <laughs> um, had I known, I might have made different, some, some slightly different choices. But uh, no, you, you will make uh, much more money as um, a psychiatrist or as a physician than you will a uh, psychologist. The Job Talk podcast shares stories from people who are passionate and love what they do in their careers. Through conversation, we explore their careers, past work experiences, and the education that got them to where they are now. We are putting together a Career Crisis Ultimate interview series. We are asking experts to give their best advice and guidance around work anxiety, career pressures, career goal setting, and ultimately career transformation. To learn more about this special interview series and get notified when it's available, please visit our webpage at thejobtalk.com slash help. Today's guest is Mikaela Kadambi. Here's our job talk with a psychologist. What education do you have to take to become a psychologist? So this is actually kind of an interesting question because it's a regulated profession. So we kind of regulate ourselves, but our jurisdictions is are kind of like provincial. So there's not like a national kind of like uh, college that we have. So every province is slightly different um, in terms of the level of education and training and some of your coursework that you may have to do to ultimately register as a psychologist in the province of Alberta. So in this particular province, um, you need sort of a series of approved courses and certainly graduate level Uh, work um, at the master's degree. Like you actually don't need a PhD to register as a psychologist in this particular province. In some of the other provinces, it is a bit different. Full working level in psychology generally does tend to be a PhD. And so um, when I was sort of in my undergrad and I was debating between a couple of different paths in psychology, I had already decided that I probably would need um, a PhD in psychology. So I have a PhD in psychology, but not all psychologists are going to have a PhD in psychology. I hate calling these failures, but um, have you experienced, uh, we'll call it a mistake. Have you experienced a mistake and what did you learn from it? And how oh did God. you, how did you rectify daily, the baby. situation? Oh, it's like, <laughs> did you say daily? Yeah. So um, I, it's funny that you say, I hate calling this a failure. I'm like, no, it's delicious. Delicious, delicious. Um, I love some of the uh, work by Angela Duckworth, who does a lot of work around grit. Failure, I love failure. I pr- I encourage people to fail with some regularity and sometimes spectacularly, okay? Um, and it's, it's something that's totally unavoidable, right? Like it's, we cannot walk through our lives or walk through any job with perfection. Like it's just not a thing. Right. And I think sort of like recognizing that and embracing that really puts you in a beautiful position just to learn, but to kind of like really get critical with ourselves when we fail. And, um, when you get critical, you really miss out on the curiosity that is the alternative. And the curiosity is stuff like, oh, that went terribly. (laughs) What? What am I going to do next time? What do you love about being a psychologist? This work um, challenges me to think. Um, And I think one of the things, it's also a bit of a myth, is that, you know, to be a good psychologist, you have to, you know, like helping people. Of course, that's important. (laughs) Of course. But you also have to be a really strong thinker. And, you know, this job, every single hour, every day, (laughs) will challenge my brain to really sort of like think quite scientifically. I am constantly in a process of kind of like really conceptualizing um, something. I'm tracking sort of where are we in this process. Um, my client and I are kind of collecting data on things and we're kind of like really sort of collaborating to see, we're kind of playing detectives together a lot of the time, um, just to see if we are on the right track. And I kind of like love that I am constantly kind of tested to 
maybe reconsider what I'm thinking, change what I'm thinking, get creative with how I might think about something. So I absolutely love, 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 love that. Um, and I like the diversity this job has really provided. So again, right now I primarily do therapy, but you know, um, in other stages of my career, I've done a bit of teaching. Um, I have done um, supervision as well as just some, even some preventative kind of care. So the diversity has been great. And as I, again, enter my old age, <laughs> my fully seasoned age, um, I also appreciate that it's kind of a career that that really kind of like these days has really got a lot more flexibility. I could, I, in theory, I could be in a villa in Italy for like several months of the year and still work, <laughs> which is again, something that has kind of like just been a recent option. Um, so I, I really like kind of the flexibility as, you know, I age or my life circumstances change that I have a lot of control over, you know, how much I, I would work and how, like how that work kind of occurs. Thank you for tuning in to the Job Talk podcast. For more information, please visit us at thejobtalk.com. Our podcast music was created by our friend Mike Malone in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada.